For centuries, boys have become men. The process came through the hands of fathers, uncles, and the men around them. A man's world was often in the outdoors. And by the sweat of his brow and work, there was a community of men around him. It was a physical and demanding world, often a life of labor and hard work. But it came with adventure and testing in the wilderness. A boy learned the path through his father by his teaching and instruction, often learning his trade and skills to live by. It was by this community of men he walked the path of those who had gone before them and stood on the shoulders of Ben as a man. It was considered the great invention of American capitalism, the assembly line. With it came the rise of an industrial revolution and a new working class of America. No longer were skills acquired at the hands of men. It was by machine. Furniture makers became knob turners. Craftsmen became button pushers. And within almost a generation, man's skills had been entirely replaced by the machines they ran, or which ran them. The cars men built gave rise to even longer commutes to work. Fewer and fewer fathers and sons came together and passed on their skills and fathering. Boys over time were left more and more on their own to books and education to learn and understand life. Boys rarely saw their fathers. And for many, the community of men was lost. It is where we find ourselves today and what Training Ground hopes to change through its program. Taking young men into work, wilderness, and worship. As the directors of Training Ground, we've created a program that speaks to the needs of young Christian men today. My heart feels more alive here than anywhere else I've ever been. It is, it is one of the most healing experiences of my life. And the most healing experience of my life. The past three months have been growing closer to God got much more of a strength and confidence in myself that I didn't have before. Going through this whole process together, you form like an inseparable bond. During the program, we have a community of older men and guides as our mentors for the young men. I've always seen older men as people that are just up, kind of up there and I'm down here and there's no connection between the two and never been able to really learn from them and never really wanted to even be around them because they're so much so far apart and they're not even interested in being engaged in my world. I've grown up with kind of a self-sufficient attitude. You can only depend on yourself and you've got to learn it by yourself and you've got to figure it out by yourself. I have all these men come around and share their stories teach us the lessons of their lives, teach us, you know, what it means to be in this area, whether it's finance, whether it's calling, whether it's, you know, the heart of a woman, any of these areas, it's, it's something I've been longing for. Especially being around Earl, you know, I, I never knew how to do any kind of car stuff. So learning how to do that is just, it's something that I can take back with me. I remember the first time we went fly fishing, just being out there thinking, all right, I know how to do this. I've seen a river runs through it. I know how to tie the knots, so I'm on my own now. There were many times when I wasn't doing it right. And so to be able to go up and ask these men, what am I doing wrong? Pushing myself to be able to accept their teaching, they would just offer their experiences and their knowledge. Just the fact that they give their time to teach says a whole lot about you know, who they are and what their passion is. Out here, I've, I've met men that do want to be a part of my world, that people that do want to engage with me. 
I think I've, I think I've learned more of what a father should be. In our program, we take young men into work and into wilderness as places to experience testing and trial, hardship and suffering. Work was the biggest context in which we experienced things. I worked as a painter over the summer. Didn't really know what to think about that when I was coming in. I was kind of not excited about it. But I got here and, and that's one of the biggest things that hit me. Like this is what, what a man does, working my butt off, painting houses when I didn't want to, waking up in the morning when I didn't want to. It was not the kind of work that I had ever done before. I've come from jobs like bartending and the investment analyst where I'm sitting in an office wearing business casual attire at a computer eight hours a day, and here I am shoveling horse manure. I lived a sheltered life. That kind of work wasn't supposed to be a part of my life. It was an everyday thing, and it was commitment and perseverance. It was quite an experience to be learning from a guy who's done it for 13 years, and okay, this is how you call it, this is how you cut a line, this is how you roll it on. A lot of it was just trying to find God in that and just praying, God, what are you trying to teach me? What is going on here? It was quite fulfilling to say that I actually had the experience of that kind of work. Out of that came just such a, a sense of accomplishment. I look back on it and I see, wow, I did that. You know, I worked my butt off, I got paid, and it, it felt good. Training ground is probably one of the most dangerous, I would say risky, vulnerable, freeing, life-giving th journeys that you can ever take for your heart. Knowing that I'm away from everything I know and everything that everyone knows about me and not being that, having to step away from it and let go of a lot of things that made me very comfortable was definitely the very, very hardest part for me. You learn a lot about yourself. I think the biggest thing that Christ is up to um, in my life out here at Training Ground was uh, just kind of showing me that um, I don't have it all figured out. Going into these, uh, these wounds and places in my life that I'd suppressed um, allows Christ to, to come and heal you. So through that, just um, trusting Him and discovering His power to do that. I really grew in my relationship with Christ in learning to seek Him out and intentionally spend time with Him. I know how to listen to God more. I know what His voice sounds like now. He did that in a, a number of different ways, just deepening my desires for mentorship with older, older men. Truly engaging and being uh, involved as far as being vulnerable, um, I think in, in some aspects, men have a hard time with that, and I know that I do. Um, so being open with my heart. Finding those moments to, to spend with him is, is a skill that um, I hope to continue. It's about finding your heart. It's about finding your identity as a man. I worked my way through the program, and now I have a better appreciation for where I'm going.